Look, the current body acceptance movement is harming people's health. All right. Ooh, I like when you Let's, bring, what bring you fire. Mean? Let's talk about uh, the current body acceptance movement. So the current body acceptance movement, by the way, I understand why it exists. It is a extreme reaction to the body, I guess, shaming uh, that the fitness um, media industry, the popular fitness diet and health industry did for so long. Mm -hmm. So what they do, what they're doing is they're trying to, to fight that, which is saying, if you're not lean, if you're not super ripped, if you don't look super sexy, you're worthless, you're dumb, whatever. And they're trying to fight it with, hey, if you're really overweight, that's healthy. If you're really overweight, accept it. It's great. It's wonderful. It's healthy. It's it's not bad, which I think is just an equally ridiculous, just opposite end of the spectrum message. Now, this was inspired from yet another, is it a magazine that put on the cover? Yeah, I think fitness? we were all tagged to get on this, right? It was It's Self Magazine. So Self, Self Magazine made this, this pivot, I think, about a year and a half, two years ago, and they're doubling and tripling down on uh woke fitness here right and trying to and they're and the, what they're highlighting is and I, and fitness. sal's right like this is a this is a reaction fair too right totally fair for us to react to the decades of poor messaging coming from the fitness space focusing yes. completely on how we look and th it's out news is out all these people that have six-pack abs and look amazing on some of these other magazines are not that healthy. Yeah, mm -hmm. They look good, but they're not technically healthy. A lot of dysfunction there, yeah. too. Yeah, tons of dysfunction. Many of them are taking steroids, like you name it. Extreme maybe, a lot of them are maybe good mm -hmm. people. They got all kinds of insecurities. Okay, news is out. We know that. We've been saying that forever. So here is the... The overcorrection to yes. that is okay. Well, if that's true, then the let's extreme overcorrection. Like, when are we going to get anywhere close to the middle yeah. again? By the way, hating yourself uh, or hating your body can look like both, right? Can look like either. Lots of people in our space, uh, and I know I've worked in fitness forever. So, and I, I've said this before people who work in our space, a higher percentage of them uh, are, have eating disorders and dysfunctional relationships with their bodies than the average population. Um, but you can hate your body and become so obsessed with that that you don't have good relationships. You do things that harm your body. You overexercise. You over diet just to look a particular way. Never satisfied. Always hating yourself. On the other end of the spectrum, you could also disregard your health. Use food <laughs> as a drug, as a way to medicate yourself, as a way to uh, to bury your feelings. Not paying attention to the the poor health effects that those things cause. You become very obese as a result. Um, it's it's really the same thing, just different. It really is. It's just and the other end. It is, and it, we have to be. There's there's nothing wrong with honesty. So there's nothing wrong with saying being obese, regardless of any other factor. This is a fact. Being obese has negative health uh, impacts on on you. It's got negative health effects, and lead what leads to obesity are dysfunctional behaviors, or mm -hmm. behaviors that aren't healthy or good for you. And oftentimes, look, the most abused drug in America, I'll make this argument all day long, is food. Uh, food, by far, if it were a drug, it would be categorized at the top in terms of damage. Well, ignoring the reality of, of what, uh, you know, uh, obesity, morbid, morbidly obese uh, individuals face is just not a, a, a service that is providing anybody any kind of value. We have to get beyond feelings and and we have to get beyond all this stuff and get back to like really just trying to focus on helping people get back to a healthy body again so i'm, I'm always torn on responding to these things like we all got tagged on this i get tagged on, on post or magazine articles uh like this all the time and a lot of times i don't even comment or respond and it's not because i don't have an opinion on it or i don't think it's ridiculous or get me fired up or whatever but the truth is i don't think self magazine is stupid i think they probably recognize exactly what we're saying but they don't give a fuck because they're in the business of people talking eyeballs about Bro, that's a big market if you yeah. you if you consider almost 40 percent of america yeah but it's 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 placating it's not fucking it's not them seriously getting behind and supporting no. it's that it will 
it will sell more magazines <clears throat> to a demographic that maybe was not buying self magazines before, and it will get the other side. So maybe the the group that was originally reading and then doesn't like the messaging talking about it, mm -hmm. and it'll get fitness people like us fired up and sharing it. Otherwise, yeah. I was I haven't fucking talked about self magazine ever in, before. Oh yeah, I didn't know that the last was two a times magazine. they've done these type of you know cover of a magazine mm -hmm. and and headlines. So I, I sometimes I. I avoid talking about it or getting involved in it because i don't want to give i don't want to fuel the uh fuel the fire anymore yeah. it's like that's really what they're looking totally. for it's the same thing why uh you know cnn loves donald trump and why freaking fox yeah. why, loves why radical liberal screaming office. you know fucking woke yeah. kids like it's yeah. just they 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 as much as they talk bad about it they love it, it because gets them it gives ratings. them attention right yeah. so sometimes i think that that's what this play is really about it's you know, it's this massive virtue signaling thing that really doesn't matter that much because at the end of the day, if it sells more magazines or it gets more millions of people talking about them, they win. Well, well there's no weight to it. It's not helping anybody. It's just, uh, again, yeah, it's just serving a, you know, certain person like. Um, yeah, it's just noise. You just noise. Right? Yeah, some to either argue about or justify. Yep. You know, like somebody's feelings. Yeah. Obesity is the result of a dysfunctional relationship with yourself uh, and with food. Okay. That's the result of it. So it's, it would be no different than a magazine showing an alcoholic and saying, this is healthy. <clears throat> this is me loving myself. Right. It's not. It's not. So you can be honest. That doesn't mean you should hate yourself. It also doesn't mean you shouldn't be empathetic, but you should be honest. Now, I, I agree with you, Adam, but there's another side to it is 40% of Americans are obese. A pretty big chunk of that 40% have tried diets, are sick and tired of the diet industry, the fitness industry, which now has been around at large for at least three or four decades. And so you're, if you're the person putting this magazine out, you're like, here is a segment of the market that will buy this. They'll love this message. They'll love the that we're telling them, don't change anything. It's totally fine. It's all good. This is you caring about yourself. And I'm going to be honest, if I'm the person that hated my body for 15 years and I was told to do crazy diets and, you know, to, to overtrain myself and it to hate my body. It resonates with you. I'm going to be like, oh my gosh, thank God. Yeah, of course. Somebody said <clears throat> something like this, right? And oh my gosh, look, someone's on the cover that looks like me. And so I get it. But, I get well, that, that's on. also why it's hard for me to, and I did though, I still, I took the bait and I still commented on that stupid post. Um but I hesitate to do it because I also know that that exact person is following that page yeah. and feels that way. And me being the fitness guy, that's who why comes you have to be over, very it's not going to reach them. Yeah. Well, well not like that, be... but I'll turn them off. I'll well, turn that I mean. person off. You're you're exactly why I don't like this guy. Because then I then I get auto, automatically pushed into the fat shaming category because yeah. I can't because I can't objectively look at it and say no, that's not health. Yeah. This person is not any more healthy than the person you're talking about who has any other addiction. It just happens to be food, and you're trying to justify it that way, and you're getting away with justifying that way because unfortunately. My people, my fitness, my fitness, you know, group of people mm -hmm. have fucked this industry for so long and have forced you in this position. And so this is the this is the uh, repercussions well, of that. I'm glad you said that, yeah. because if you do work in the fitness and health space and this is largely talking to coaches and trainers, because I, I believe that a majority of coaches and trainers have a deep passion for helping people. If this is you and you really are in fitness to help people. Right. So it's not this. Um, narcissistic reason or whatever. You actually want to help people. When you comment on stuff like this and when you talk about this, be careful. Don't just rally the other fitness people that want to hear you say how bad it is, but rather understand that you're communicating to people that need to hear this message in an empathetic, understanding way and in a way that's going to help them. Because otherwise what you'll do is you'll radicalize them even further. But I think we should always speak out. We just got to be smart about it. And why do we got to always speak out? Because this type of mentality is a cancer. The mentality that says take no responsibility and it's everyone else's fault and it's all great, this mentality spreads like wildfire. It is alluring to people, ultimately damaging, but initially alluring, and it spreads like crazy. And then to counter it, is difficult because the second you counter it, you're labeled a fat shamer. Oh, you just are shaming fat people. It's like, oh, and then it's hard to, like, how do I counter that? No, I'm not. What's, and then you're on yeah. the defense, right? So we have to speak out on this because just like we speak out on the other bad messaging, and I feel so bad because 
the a majority of people struggle with this. So you know, it's a again, it's a majority of us struggle with this. Oh my gosh, they're getting bombarded from all angles with terrible messaging. Like I, I, when we started the podcast, remember when we first met? We were at your house, Adam, mm -hmm. and I think I said something like ninety five percent or more of the information that's being sold or given to people in regards to weight loss or health and fitness is terrible. I remember you guys agreeing. And that's true. It's like most, most of the, so it's like. Well, it's, in, it's what inspired the content that we produce, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Was, it, uh, we knew that there, which is what, it's why, how I answer too when people ask like, how have you guys done 1700 episodes and aren't you already afraid to run out of content? I'm like, no, as long as the fitness place keeps fucking pu pushing out garbage information, oh, so we've much, always yeah. got something to counter. They give us well, so much. Just, <laughs> oh God, it's just so frustrating though. I, I swear to God, if, if I could just take like the last two, three years worth of content any of these publications has put out and just put it in a dumpster and set it on fire mm -hmm. like, that would be the move <laughs> it, that would be a big fire yeah there's a lot of garbage out there but it's very sad it's very sad because if i were in that person's shoes and i didn't know any better i would fall for it i would i would feel as terrible as i have as i would have felt having failed at my attempts well, that's why i feel like it should anger you though it should anger you as a fitness professional even if it is like um, you know, it's just contrary to good information. It's not good information to, to provide people. And you do have to approach it with, you know, soft gloves it's, because you know, who's again, paying attention you're to who you're trying to, you're actually trying to reach. help people. And it's, it's manipulating. But it does make me angry. It's manipulating people the same way, uh, that when the fitness industry says things like you're no good cause you're fat, you're unattractive, you have no value, you know, they, they prey on your insecurities. It's just as manipulative. It's no different. It's just a different angle, yeah. but it's extremely I mean, it manipulative. Gets, it gets me fired up and passionate, but I don't get angry over it. I mean, the truth is uh, it, it provides opportunity for us, to be completely honest, right? So if if, uh, if all the information out there was good or aligned with what we talk about, we wouldn't have much of a job. Uh, we live in a free country, right? uh, at least right now we do. Uh, and so it, it, it's not like this is a government mandated way of thinking. And so everybody has to, then that would make me a lot more angry. And it, it, I have the opportunity to have a, a smarter, louder, better voice. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I don't get too upset about it. Yes, I can get passionate and fired up <clears throat> over topics like this because I, I see so many sheep and people being fooled by it. But I don't get that mad. I mean, it's uh, we have the ability to be able to counter that message in with what what we do today. So yeah, it's the long game. Yeah, it, I mean, it, it is what. Yeah, it, it's you know, the, the short reactions never really do much, right? It's it's about being consistent. And the angry reactions. You're right, Adam. The angry, like you know, it's your responsibility. Go do it. You're lazy. No. <laughs> you are not helping anybody. You yeah, got to you know, do this. Just the right as you're, way. I feel like you're just as guilty, right? Though, yeah, on that yeah. side, you know, it's maybe not the best transition, but it does remind me of the the post that Gary Vee just did about money. Money. Um, he was asked recently about um, his definition of success, and he kind of went on this little rant about how fucked up we have it as, as a nation right now, like this idea of what how we measure and 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 say success is. And he went in to talk about like statistically what the one percenters are as far as revenue, so that. And he says, you know, the crazy part is, you know, I've got I've got plenty of friends at all spectrums, friends that are making thirty, sixty thousand dollars a year and a hundred grand a year, to friends that are making millions and millions of dollars. And he goes. I know more unhappy, depressed, fucking, you know, multimillionaires than I do people that make 60 grand to, and he goes, I know people that are unbelievably happy in life making 90 grand, 80, 90 grand a year and so like that. So this, this idea of like what we've painted the picture of success and what it's supposed to look like is yeah. so, so flawed. It's also with beauty. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Arthur Brooks told me this. He said, if you <clears throat> were on a scale of one to 10, a five in terms of beauty, and you devoted all your time and resources to get yourself from a five to a nine. So you're going from the middle to like, you're one of the most beautiful people. He says that your happiness would increase by something like uh, like less than 5% or something like that. It's like 3% increase. No, it aligns the same with money, right? It does. Yeah. And, uh, and studies will show that. If your basic needs are, net, needs are met and you're not struggling past a certain point, it doesn't provide any additional uh, value or happiness. And we, it, it's funny, we place all of our eggs in the baskets of money, you know, beauty, uh, material items, stuff like that. When those are, they're not very valuable in terms of happiness. They really aren't. I would make the this. same case for chasing like aesthetics too. That's the transition I was looking for in that, bringing that up. And what you're saying is just that 
you know, we had this idea of, of having this crazy ripped, you know, cover of a magazine, you know, 20 years ago is like just the ultimate. But how many people do you know that have you know sacrificed so much to get their body to look that whether it be taking drugs or being like in a, you know, not going out or doing anything for a year, two years, which is would be a lot of these competitors and stuff like that to, to look this way. And they're unhappy and miserable. So that's I under I, I do get the movement on the like, yeah. by the way, sometimes people are rich. And sometimes people are ripped because they're unhappy. In other words, that's right. They're trying to fix their unhappy. They're medicating with it. Yes, they are. They are medicating with fitness. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's exactly what I saw when I got into competing. That blew my mind. Was I really did not expect that? I really thought that when I got behind stage and I got a chance to meet all these, the you know, the one percent in the you know, it's like thinking that like you're getting the back room of all the millionaires, right? Yeah. Like, man, I can't wait to pick their brains and hear what they have to say for advice, and then realizing, oh my god. They're all miserable. Yeah, yeah. Or they all have terrible advice or like, I know. you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what it felt like when I got back there with all these competitors that had these incredible physiques. I was just like, oh my God, most of, most of these kids back here are just, they have incredible discipline and sacrifice and they've been able to do it for years on years, but they're miserable inside mm. and their way of going about it is awful. And if that is what success looks like, I want nothing Here, to do with here's it. Here's what the, what the irony is. Uh, if you if you do become wealthy, the it, the process is what can make you ha happy, not the money, right? So it's very different winning money versus learning how to build wealth through following a passion or doing something that you feel is meaningful. In that case, the process is what makes you makes you happy. Same thing with fitness. It's not the goal. It's not that you're looking a particular way that makes you happy, but rather the pursuit. Is, as long as it's healthy, right? If it's a healthy pursuit. It's the pursuit that provides uh, a lot of the happiness that you may get. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.